I'm gonna give you a small advice. If you forget this one, the car. Shut up! So if you today we're gonna work on a uh, 2011 BMW 750 with the N63 engine, which everybody knows this is a notorious engine for oil consumption. Um, granted, though the car has 140 some thousand miles, it's perfect, looks super nice with the exception of the valve seals. So after removing the valve covers, I noticed that the upper timing chain guys, they're pretty much gone. And the guy is lucky he did not lose an engine. Uh, but look at that. So uh, I'm about to take the timing covers out, uh, lock the cams in place, take the cams out, and do them uh, one bay at a time. I usually start on this bay here. And then after everything is done, we're gonna remove the turbos because there is a uh, flange on the bottom that always leaks either coolant or oil. So we're gonna take care of it while um, everything is apart. It should be pretty simple, I've done so many of them. This one, it can be done in the car with the tools, but I would not recommend that because, as you can see, I had to drop the engine down because I have the table and it's so much easier to do it this way, but with the tools, you can still do it in the car. I don't recommend it because you're gonna be leaning on the car for days and it's not good for your back. Um, Mike here behind the camera posed a really good question to how I remember to put everything back together. Well, when you do one thing for the first time, I always take pictures as I go. I mean, I take this section out, I take a picture. I take this section out, I take a picture and kind of label the screws or have them organized in a certain way or you can leave the screws with the part you take out. And that's, uh, that's how I learned to put them back together, you know? It's like a puzzle, because most of the stuff goes in one way. But always, always uh, take pictures, lots of pictures. Like, like I said, I mean, most of the cases, everything goes one way, so it's either very hard or impossible um, to put them back together wrong way, you know? Like this one, it's marked with an A for exhaust, and this one is an E for intake. I mean, obviously you can mix them up, which is no good, but um, it's, it's a no-brainer, you know? And this one fits one way, you cannot just put it there. And this, I mean, this, it's pretty much same with hoses, the harnesses. Um, they're shaped to go one way. So basically those are the camshaft sensor, one for the intake, one for the exhaust. I mean, this one goes right here, but this one will never reach where this one goes, so. So, um, obviously, we have to remove the cams um, on this side, because I usually start on this side always, I mean, it's just force of habit. But before you do that, you make sure the engine is on time. I, it's up to you guys what you're gonna do. Um, but do not buy those Amazon or eBay timing tools. Get the, the right one, which is the AGA. Uh, it's pretty much triple the price, but it's worth every dime. It's much tighter tool, it times so much better. I got to tell you, I bought the Amazon one and I did not like it. I tried it once, pushed it to the side. I don't like it. Get the, the right tools. We got the crankshaft to top the center. We got the tensioner all the way locked. You can remove that out and the, the tools come, come with a preloaded tensioner. I usually leave it in. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me. Because um, once everything is out, it's gonna be out of the way anyway. So with everything being locked, we're gonna remove these two screws, actuators, the upper timing, um, the guide, which is broken, is gonna go to trash. Remove everything and then start the process of replacing the valves, seals.
Okay, so the camshaft bearings are already marked. So you can just pretty much put them all together in a box. And don't worry about mixing them up because again they are marked and they go in a certain way. Now we're going to remove all the uh, rocker arms. Now that they have to go um, the same spot you took them out. I made this out of 2x4 intake exhaust. Order. It's awesome. Yeah, whatever you can. So basically, we use this caps to cover the uh, fuel system. This one has hardened. Um, so no debris goes in there, you know. The kit comes with a tool to where, if you want to, you can remove the injectors out and the fuel rail. But it's extra work that you don't have to. Okay, so what's going to happen next? We're going to have to put air pressure into the cylinder to keep the valves closed while we put uh, while well, we uh, take the spring out and this one what it does make sure that this chain does not move while we do that because although we have the cams locked the piston can uh, can still move so with this one in place that's not a chance Florida who said Florida I love Florida So I'm not going to sit and explain how the tool works, I mean just watch, if you want to know there is a detailed video from the manufacturer, the AGA, that will show you exactly um, pretty much how it works. So what I use for this, this is a, a cylinder leak down tester, because um, you can control how much air to put in it. Usually I go 100% on this and this engine is really healthy, really, really healthy because if it was a leak, I mean this gauge will be pretty much, but with 100 PSI, this is more than enough to um, take it apart. <laughs> They're talking about food. They're agreeing to disagree. It's funny though. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but this engine looks super clean. Looks like whoever had it before, because obviously it has a temp tag. Um, but whoever had it before, I mean, took really good care of it. This. I'll just pull the seal out. And yeah. So if you see the hole on the old one is significantly larger and it's pretty much hard as rock. It's not even pliable. Where this one is like super soft and the hole is way smaller. And there is many ways. I mean, it's everyone has his own way of doing stuff. I mean, I feel comfortable doing them one way, you know. And the kit comes with this lovely tool. This one helps put in the seal without scratching the seal. If you don't have the tool, make sure you use one of these. That's it. Now I put the spring back. Okay, so these are marked left and right. Again, I'm not going to show you how the stuff works, but um, always you switch to the next valve, you know? So the next one is going to be on the right side. 
Remember, when you start good, everything falls smooth. So usually I just put a little bit of grease where the valve keepers go. Put a little bit on the screwdriver. Stays in. Put it here, stays in too. That's it. That is it. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna take the, the brackets out and install the camshafts. for the markings, all right? Look for intake, not exhaust, because it's in German. A for exhaust. Ah, oh, look at that. Okay, so um, there is two cam holders. Um, they're machined to go perfectly where they're supposed to be, and then this bracket on top holds them tight in place where all those four corners, they have to be flush with the, with the cylinder head. That means the cams, they're locked in place, they're on time. Now just tighten the Venus bolts and that's it, it's done. like that it's done um, I'm gonna leave this one in right now because I'm gonna have to jump on the other side so since that one is there leave it alone so basically um, the other side is gonna be a mirror image um, same as this side just make sure torque everything properly uh, keep everything clean again take pictures if you don't know what you're doing and that's it Thank you for watching and please subscribe.